everybody, and welcome to another episode of Book Goodies, the author series edition. Um, I'm your host, Deborah Carney, and today I have with me a guest author, Dana Steele. Hi, Dana. How you doing? I'm great, Deborah. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, well, I've been um, kind of on a podcasting marathon and have interviewed so many great authors, and I'm so looking forward to, to talking to you today. I'm so glad you answered our call for um, authors to, to talk out. Why don't you introduce yourself and let us know the title of your um, current project? Well, my latest book just came out um, about a week ago. It's called 101 Ways to Rock Your World, Everyday Activities for Success Every Day. Um, I guess I'll, I'll give you a little bit of my background and why I use the word rock and rock star. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, as I tell people, I used to be cool. I was a, a rock and roll DJ for about 20 years oh, here nice. in Houston. It, it, you know what? It was a lot of fun. Thank goodness there were no cell phones and uh, and uh, digital cameras in the 80s because I'd, <laughs> you know, I'd be in a lot of trouble. But you know what? I had a great time. Um uh, I was one of the top female uh, rock radio personalities in the country. I hung out with the Rolling Stones and Van Halen and ZZ Top. And, you know, it was just it was a, an incredible time to be in music. But through that whole time, you know, I learned an awful lot about marketing and promotion, which I use to this day. I also knew back then that my shelf life as a female rock and roll DJ was not very long. So I better, you know, figure out a way to turn it into a living. Um, So fast forward, I wrote a book called Rock to the Top, What I Learned About Success from the World's Greatest Rock Stars. That came out about uh, almost right around four years ago. And it was a business book which spawned a speaking career, which is what I do now. I speak to uh, businesses, uh, business conferences, and colleges all over the country about achieving success. But it's it's not boring. I get to use all of my old pictures with you know John Bon Jovi and Eddie Van Halen and uh, sort of tie it all into rock and roll. So that's that's the short version. How's that, Deborah? That's awesome. I'm I'm fascinated. I'm intrigued. <laughs> I'm going to go buy that book. Um, <laughs> well, you know what? It was a fun time. But I tried to tell people all along. I think part of where the book, the first book, came from was. People would say, oh, my God, you were so lucky. Well, yeah, I was lucky. It was a great time. But I created my own luck. I created my own success. I marketed and promoted like nobody's business. And when I decided to to be an author, I did what I do with anything. I did a lot of research. I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of asking. Um and, and I discovered uh, that it was that it was really no different. You really have to get out there and pr- promote. It's not for sissies. You've got to promote the heck out of yourself. And I remember talking to um, Ridley Pearson, the best-selling author, one time. And Ridley said, you know, if I could self-publish, I would, but, but I can't. I'm sort of in this cog. I'm in this whole system now, and this is how it works for me. Right. Um, he goes, because it doesn't – unless you're unless you're John Grisham or Stephen King – I don't care if you sign with the best publisher in the world. You're still going to have to do your own marketing and your own promotion. That's just the way it works. Yeah. So, you know, I sort of took that to heart and I thought, well, if that's what Ridley says, if if Ridley says that's the way to do it, then I'll do it. And uh, I've never looked back. It's been a really fun, frustrating, (laughs) thrilling, nerve wracking, crazy business. And I love it. Now, um, so you took the self-publishing route. And are you working with like a small press or do you self-publish through um, Kindle and CreateSpace or how do you, how are you doing your publishing? I decided to use iUniverse just because okay. um, it was a little bit easier to just get it across all the platforms. Okay. Uh, any, you know, whether you go with a traditional publisher, a hybrid publisher or a self-publisher, you still have to be extremely organized. I hear a lot of authors complain about their publishers, about their self-publishers, and it usually boils down to the fact that the author doesn't have their stuff together. Right, because Um, they didn't know what they needed. That's right. They didn't know what they needed. And nobody tells you that. Nobody says, you know, the hard part is after the book is out. (laughs) The writing writing is actually the easy part. (laughs) Yeah, you thought editing the book was a bitch. Why do you start promoting it and and having to get out there and market it? It's a nonstop thing. 
Um, so, so there's there's little things I do, but this the new book, um, as you can tell, I play off the whole you know rock star thing. But that was my career. I right. was the rock diva. I was that was what I did for over twenty years. So it's kind of fun. And the radio station that I was with was a very very um, famous radio station in Houston called 101 KLOL. So it's kind of fun. The new book plays off the 101. So for the people that were fans back then, they kind of get that. But I wrote a blog for a blog post for Fast Company, the entrepreneurial magazine. Right. Um, It was a a year ago, a little over a year ago uh, in March, Deborah. And it was was kind of a a throwaway post. I I was mad. I don't remember who had made me mad that day. But I thought, how can I help you be successful if you're not taking care of the most basic things that have to be done every day? So I wrote this really quick, really fast blog post called Five Things to Do Every Day for Success. And basically said, if you're not doing these five things, I don't even want to talk to you. Okay. And it was get up early, pay attention to the news, you know, know what's going on in the world, contact somebody who can give you money. (laughs) <laughs> you know, whether it's to look for a job or to send an invoice or just to say, hey, I was thinking about you. How are you? Um, get in touch with an old friend that you haven't talked to in ages and just find out what they're working on. See if there's something you can do to help them. And, and the fifth one was write a handwritten thank you note to somebody or just a handwritten note. And the weird thing is, is this post started to go viral in April of 2012 it uh, has continued to be one of their most read posts since then. It's had over a million views. And people started sending me suggestions. And, you know, my favorite was eat a piece of chocolate. I think that should definitely be on the list. <laughs> so, so I started, it kind of started as a joke. And then, you know, first it started, I was mad. So I, you know, I vented by writing. And then I started keeping this list of things people sent me. And, and, and then I thought, you know what? I'm going to. It is a hundred things you got to do every day, 101 things, maybe even more. Um, but but just I simple wrote a, things. It's very simple. And, you know, somebody told me, somebody, we were in Europe a few weeks ago, and a friend of a friend picked up my book and said, oh, this is like bathroom reading. And, oh, Deborah, that it just really bummed me out. It really offended me. <laughs> no, but that's a compliment. I get it. That's what my husband said. He said he went and got me a glass of wine and he handed me a big old glass of wine and said, baby, do you realize how many bathrooms there are in the world? (laughs) And how many people pick up a book on their way to the bathroom or they leave the the things, you know, they have their little basket. My grandparents had a little basket, you know, in the bathroom that was filled with books and they could just flip through and decide you know, what they wanted to read while they were contemplating the world. <laughs> well, and I gave it to, I took it to, I had a lunch today, and I, it was a friend of mine that's VP of uh, Student Affairs at a big university here in Houston, and I brought her the book. And she opened it up and went, oh, it's like chicken soup for the soul for the Twitter generation. That is the third person that used nice. that tagline that didn't know each other. Nice. Get that yes, on the so book it's, website. It's actually already, um, I've already been asked to adapt it. So we're doing it for college students next spring. Okay. We're doing one for teachers next fall. So I don't know. Maybe this will be my dummies series. I don't yep. know. Just, we're having fun with it. Well, and I like that you have a title that you can actually adapt to being similar to the dummy. You know, 101 things to rock your blah, rock blah, the teacher blah. world. Yeah. yeah, rock your college world. And you yeah. know, I think that's one of the that's one of the things that 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 authors have to to what you have to do is be open to the possibilities. Pay attention to, for example, when the when the the editor. I went on and had and paid the extra money to, to use one of our universe's editors. Cause that's another thing we've learned. No matter how many times you and your friends read a book, you're going to miss so much. So just hire a professional editor mm-hmm. to do that last pass. And she's the one who said, wow, this is, you know what? This would be like the dummy series and this would be fun. Pay attention when people say things like that, because yeah. I sat there, I, I thought about that all night and I thought, well, why not? Yeah. Well, Why not? And to build off of that, one of the reasons that I started um, my podcast series years ago um, for 
Uh, my day job is, uh, this may be, <laughs> book goodies may turn into my day job. Um, shh, none of my clients listening heard that. Um, during the day, I have, um, I'm an internet marketing consultant. So we have clients that we help out with their affiliate marketing online. So um, like your book is selling through Amazon. Uh, we would be the people that would manage the Amazon affiliates and tell them to sell your book and put the link on their website. So uh, Amazon obviously has their own team, but we do that for um, multiple clients. And one of the things that we do, one of, one of the things that happened to me is I was at a conference and I had a bad back. And I sat down with a group of people, you know, a huge group of people went out to dinner and then I, it was the very beginning of Twitter. And I sent a little Twitter message to the people that were at the conference and said, I'm going to be eating at the hotel buffet. I can't tolerate, you know, a long bumpy car ride. And five people came to dinner with me and they were like so flabbergasted with the dinner conversation that one of the women, um, Kim Salvino, she was an affiliate manager for an in-house program at the time. She looked at me and, said, and she said, Debbie, you have to have affiliate ABCs because you have so much knowledge that you need to, you know, start a website and start chronicling all of your advice. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. And I thought about it and I went back to my home to hotel room and I registered a bunch of ABC's websites uh, related to the internet marketing industry. And I went ahead and got a logo made and I'm not, I'm a writer, but I'm a better talker than I am a writer. And by listening to the people who were telling me what they needed, um, a friend of mine, we started a podcast instead because it was this newfangled thing that you could do where you could like, you know, I, he was in New York and I was in uh, Las Vegas, but we could talk to each other and record a conversation and put it up on the internet and people would listen to it. And it was, you know, a combination of what people wanted. And every author or every podcaster or every communicator, if you listen Instead of trying to force your ideas on people, if you're more receptive, you will find out what you need to do, and then you'll be able to do it. See, I love that. One of the things I talk about in I, my speech is find your inner rock star, and I talk yep. about the four rock star principles of success, which are you know, passion, knowledge, networking, and appreciation. And under knowledge, I talk about... you. You'd be amazed how much you would learn if you would just listen. Just yep. when you go to go to a conference, when you when you ask somebody a question, just really stop and listen to what people are saying. Um, you'll 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 find so many things you can do, you know, with your book, with your business, with your life. Just be open to these new ideas and and new ways of getting out there and and, and marketing your book. And, and another thing I like to tell people is don't tell me, you know what, don't tell people how great your book is or, <laughs> or how, don't tell them how great the reviews are. Tell them what the book's going to do for them. Yes. My book is going to make you successful. If it doesn't make you successful, it's at least going to make you laugh because there's some great quotes in it and there's some great images from cartoonist Bill Hines. So don't, that, and this isn't just for your book. This is for your service, your product whatever never tell people how good it is tell people how good it's going to make them exactly and that's exactly what we do um you know when we when people come to us we're very selective because you know we've gone through the days of we took on any client just because we needed a client and when someone contacts me and says i want this this and this and I will tell them, okay, you want those things, but actually he, these are the things that we can do for you that will be better than these things that you think you want. And, you know, those are the people that we work with because it, there needs to be a good two-way communication. And even as a speaker, you know, you said you're a speaker. You listen to the audience that comes up to you after your speaking engagement, and, yeah, they're going to say, yeah, you did a great job, or they're going to come up to you and say, you know, I would like to know a little bit more about this and or I'd like to hear a little bit more about that and all of a sudden you've got topics for your next uh, for your next speech that you need to do you know I did a I did a speech the other day for 200 oil and gas interns here in the Houston area 
and I'm a big proponent of handwritten thank you notes. I think until the post office is absolutely dead and buried and gone, <laughs> uh, you need to write a handwritten thank you note. Mm -hmm. And I was telling these interns that when you start interviewing for jobs, when you get through with your internship, write a handwritten thank you note to your mentor from the company. When you start looking for jobs, make sure you write a handwritten thank you note to the people that interview you. And I thought it was really interesting because one of the students came up to me afterwards. She was very ch sharp. She was great. She said, but I got to ask you a question. How do you write a handwritten thank you note without looking antiquated? <laughs> And I thought that was a really good observation yeah. on her part. So, you know, we talked about it and I explained, you know, immediately follow up with an email. Thank you so much for your time. That was great. But then follow that up, which is a very sincere thank you so much. Get yourself some professional, like really nice crane note cards or stationery. Yep. This is not the time to be using your, you know, little kitty cat note cards. <laughs> and... You know, and just, uh, and I know you're a cat woman, no offense, Deborah. No. Uh, <laughs> but I said, you know, believe me, it will not look antiquated. And if it does look antiquated, I'm not even sure that's the person you want to work for. Exactly. Exactly. And a lot of the authors that I've been talking to over the past few weeks have been people that are telling me how they market offline and how they're contacting their schools and libraries and how they're sending notes. And, you know, things that people now in our instant society of everything being electronic, you know, if you send an email, people read it, they say, oh, that's nice. And then it gets filed away or it gets in the trash because they read it. Now they're trying to clean their inbox out, you know, or it gets filed somewhere. But if they get something in the mail that's nice and handwritten, you know what happens to that? It stays on the desk. It goes in the drawer. It goes where they are going to see it again a few weeks from now. You know, it's something that lets people know you are willing to go that extra mile to instead of sending me just a free thank you note via email or internet or text message or whatever, that you actually spent some money to say thank you to me. And it, and it really does make a difference if you, it goes, If you, again, I go back to HR. I've talked to a lot of HR people and they say it, it goes in your file. Yep. That's just one of those things that so many people don't do it that when you do it, it makes you stand out. And any time you can stand out, mm -hmm. it's a good thing because there are hundreds of thousands of books published. I've heard all kinds of numbers. The number that keeps coming popping up is there are 5,000 books published every day. I, I, every, I, every day. Now, how are you going to stand out in all that noise? It's it's no different than I've I've read that we are inundated with something crazy like over 100,000 messages every day. That's that's all the ads you see and the product placement and the billboards and so you've got to think, yes, so many authors, they, I, I know we all feel like we have just given birth to the most beautiful baby in the whole world like no one else has ever had a baby ever. Mm -hmm. um, but once you, know, once you get that book in your hands and, and you get over that, you've got to realize, yes, you and 5,000 other people had a book today. Yep. Now, what are you going to do? Yes, it's good. If your book is as good as you think it is you're still going to have to get out there and promote it and market it and push it like crazy. Right, because it isn't it isn't like the the old days of the beginning of the internet where, you know, you could do something and, you know, it it was relatively easy to be found because, you know, there were there weren't 25 billion websites out there competing for the same attention or however many, you know, millions of books there are on uh, Amazon and and uh, Lulu and CreateSpace and you know Barnes and Noble and all these all all these places, you know it, the barrier to entry now has been removed, and you can become an author, you know like you can publish a book if you don't bother getting it edited you can you can publish a book as soon as you finish writing it you know you can have it online in 24 hours, but should you? You know, and then once you do, how are people going to find you? You know, they're not going to just, it's not a, you can build it and they will come. It's a, you build it and then you have to find people and bring them to you. 
You know, there's a there's a great phrase I like to steal from Seth Godin. Seth is a pretty prolific business writer, and he wrote a book called Tribes. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I I so understood that when I was in radio, uh, we called my I was on the air during the day mm -hmm. when most people were at work, and it sort of evolved over the years that my fans became known as steel workers. Oh, nice. So when I put out. My, you know, when I put out, when I decided to be an author and start writing, I, yes, I was fortunate. I had a, a pretty built-in, you know, audience to begin with in Houston. But, you know, I've built that up all over the country and, and literally around the world over the last couple of years. A couple of fans at a time. Yep. You know, just one fan at a time and you're going to be fine. You know, I... Use utilize social media, but remember that the key word in social media is social. Yes, it's not, not a blast place, out. <laughs> right, it's not a place to advertise. It's a place to share, and be funny, and you know, build your tribe. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have a website. Make sure you've checked all your spelling. Just so many things that go into it. And then I constantly write blogs. I write. I, I, you know, I don't, most authors don't make money off of a book. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody that thinks they're going to get rich off of a book, you know, don't bet the house. Right. If you do, good for you. You're one of the fortunate ones. You write a book because you can't imagine not writing the book. Right. And the book turns out to be a venue for me as a speaker. Yep. It's a calling uh, card. Yeah. It's a calling card. And But I still have to get out there and, and promote all this. So uh, 101 Ways to Rock Your World came out just a couple of weeks ago. And for the first week or so, I put a free ebook link out everywhere on my Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+, Plus, on, um, you know, just everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. My newsletter, everything. And it was like, thank you for supporting me. Here's a book. All I ask is if you like it, go buy a physical copy for somebody else. Oh, nice. And sales have been very nice. If somebody really likes your book and it's as good as you think it is, people are going to go buy it. Yeah. There, yeah. There are some people that once they get the free ebook, they're going to love it. That's great. And they're, and they're going to move on. The way I look at it is they probably weren't going to buy the physical book in the first place. Right. So if they post about my book or write about my book or bring up my book in a conversation a year from now, then I've gotten what I needed out of it. Yep. Because, let's face it, as readers, not as authors, separate yourself from your book and think about how you decide on books that you're going to read. Somebody told you about it. Um, you did a search for a specific thing. and But once you saw the title of the book, you went and looked to see if anybody else is reading it. You talk to different people about it. I mean, the only books that I've gone out and like pre-ordered and bought without any recommendation at all was Steven Tyler's um, bi autobiography because I knew that was just going to be hysterical. And um, see, I knew you were an old rock and roll. Hippie. Yeah, and Sammy Hagar. <laughs> I bought his book right away because he's a smart businessman. And I actually bought them because they were on a talk show. They were each on Jay Leno, you know, a couple of weeks apart, saying, I've got a book coming out. And I'm like, got to get it. I, I absolutely have to have that book. And then after I read them, you know, people think quite, you know, correctly that Steven Tyler's absolutely nuts. And if you read the book, you know, you go and you tell other people you have to read this book. And they're like, but I don't even like Steven Tyler. And I'm like, I don't care if you like him or not. you got to read the book because it gives you an insight into life during that time period that, you know, no one else understands. And I, I told one of the other authors, I, I, I totally uh, have full sympathy for the editor of that book because it was confusing the way it came out. I have to imagine how confusing it was before the editor and co-author, ghostwriter, whatever, got a hold of it and tried to put it together. And which one was that? That was the Steven Tyler book. Oh, the Steven Tyler's book. Cause yeah, I was going to say, I picked up Sammy Hagar's book just to make sure I wasn't in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the Sammy Hagar book is awesome, too. He talks about, you know, how him and his mom were, like, living in, you know, places where you shouldn't be living. And, you know, and then he went through life and and he's a businessman he's a 
He's a wonderful musician, but he takes his craft and combines it with business skills. He's you know? actually written the forward to my next book, if I ever get off my behind and get that one out. Oh, lovely. I-, I love him. I can watch him forever. I mean, you mentioned Eddie Van Halen. You know, I mean, I, I remember Van Halen from the days way back, but when I'm listening to the music, I like the stuff that Sammy did. I, I like that. that well, Sammy's, that Sammy's manager, who went on to be Van Halen's manager, was my, he was like my godfather. He was my mentor. That's awesome. And so, yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty wild time. It was a pretty fun time. But I do love to tell people what an incredible businessman Sammy is because a lot of people don't, they, they really don't realize. But it does go back to what you and I are saying. I always relate it back to, you know, the Mick Jaggers, the John Bon Jovi, the Sammy Hagar, the Gene Simmons. What we're saying is are the same principles they used and still yep. use to this day. Give people for what they their want. Career. It's, it is nonstop working 24-7, paying attention to what's going on around you and you know, for somebody listening that's thinking, but you know what? I'm a first time author. I'm not Sammy Hagar. You know what? It's, it's, it's again, it's little things. Make sure you have a website. Yeah. Make, even if it's just a WordPress blog, that's free. You can set that up. Make sure you have a Facebook fan page. That's free. Make sure you have a Twitter account. That's free. Make sure you have books in the car with you at all times. Or, um, I go to Vista Print uh-huh. and, and, and print up business cards that have my book uh, cover and title on them. Yes. I, if I'm on a plane or something and I can't carry a handful of books, I always have a business card that has the picture of the book, you know, the, the cover. I always, but that goes back to my, my radio days yep. where, you know, there were always t-shirts and koozies and pictures. We were always giving away stuff. People love stuff. Make sure that when the opportunity comes up for you to meet a reader, you do not leave them empty-handed. Yep. That's and that's great advice, and um, that's something that I, as a marketer, should have thought of. And I'm a little mad at myself that I didn't, because several authors that I've talked to have said that they make up a card that has a picture of their cover, and uh, for the electronic versions of their books, there will be a QR code on the back or the link on the back of the book to go buy it, and then they'll autograph the card. And, uh, see, and that's a great idea. I've got right now. I just ordered a bunch of cards that have the um, the link to the free ebook. Mm-hmm. So when I run into people that you know I want to work with, I think it'd be good for them to have a free copy of the book. You know what? Give away as get your book into the hands of as many readers as you can. And when you've got an ebook, you got a link to it. You can put it on Dropbox or whatever, and and create a public link. Mm-hmm. I give those cards to everybody, especially people that have, you know, blogs and big Twitter followers and lots of Facebook fans or might hire me for a speech. I don't yeah. go. It's like my business. It's like I tell business people never don't inundate people with your business cards, but don't ever go anywhere without one. Make sure that when somebody says, how can I get in touch with you? Yeah. You never want to go, here, you got a piece of paper, let me write down the name of my book. No, no, have a card because then those people can go right there to their phone or when they get back in front of their computer and they can order your book immediately. Yep, because you gave them something special and you're like, hey, I don't give free books to everybody, but here, here's a free book. You know, take this book and, and, uh, you know, do what you want with it. And, you know, it's... One of the things that, that Kindle does, um, if you're Kindle um, exclusive, is that for five days every 90 days that you commit to being exclusive to Kindle with your ebook, um, they'll give you five free promotion days. And I've run into people who are like, well, why would I want to give away my book? And I'm like, um, that can be your review book, that can be your, you know, uh, it's to get your book on people's devices because, of course, in your Kindle book, you have links back to your website and back to your other books that you've written. And it doesn't matter that you're giving away the book that you would charge, you know, nine ninety nine for or five ninety nine or even ninety nine cents. If you give it to people for free, 
they they have it and they can read it and they can click and they can tell their friends because hey I got this for free but it's really good you should go get it you know I have probably given away the last time I checked the downloads there were over 2000 downloads That's... I've given away 2000 copies of my new book mm-hmm. in the last 2 weeks it cost me nothing well I think I paid $26 that included shipping for the cards I carry for the in cards. my cards yeah. yeah, but you can also put that book link out into your social media without that. That's at no cost, but giving your well. Yeah. And here's another thing I created um, with uh, Pretty Link. If you're using WordPress, yes, you download a free app called or a free. It's not an app. What is it? It's a plugin, widget, whatever plugin. A plugin yep. um, called Pretty Link. And what I do is I offer everybody. Uh, for example, I'm talking to some students at Purdue University in November. So I've created a link, danasteel.com slash Purdue. And it goes to the page where they can download the book. They can download my success checklist. I can do, you know, danasteel.com slash focus, danasteel.com slash, you know, book ABCs, danasteel. Yep. I can put, and it makes people feel good because they have their own dedicated link. Mm-hmm. And then they spread it. Um, uh, we did one, uh, a, a Twitter uh, account that has about 20,000 followers dedicated to nursing. It's a nurse's okay. um, Twitter account. They love the book. And so I created a danasteel.com slash nurses. And so we did one for danasteel.com teachers. And it's going viral. I don't care. It's yep. not costing me a penny. And people are talking about my book. Yep. Yep. And, you know, that's, again, we're talking traditional publishing versus self-publishing. If you were with a traditional publisher, you couldn't do any of this stuff. You know, you couldn't give your book away for free because your publisher would have a connection. You know, you could give away certain copies and so many copies, but you wouldn't be able to just take it and go viral with it because... But yeah, I think even a lot of the traditional... Money. I think a lot of the traditional publishers, uh, publishing houses are realizing... It's kind of like the record companies. I watched this happen with the record companies mm-hmm. when they were like, you know, saying, oh, iTunes will never last. Well, you know what? It did, and it's putting you out of business. Um, I think the traditional public publishing houses are starting to get more and more. I mean, obviously, Brad Meltzer can't come out and say, okay, I'm going to give everybody the ebook, but he doesn't have to. He's going to be a bestseller the week he comes out. Right. Uh, but for authors who need to get known, you know, I don't know if a traditional publisher would deny it in this day and age if a if a, a new unknown author who was having trouble getting off the ground said, you know, give me a PDF and let me give it away for a while. Right. Because you're going to get it into the hands of people who weren't going to buy it in the first place. Now they're talking about you. Right. And that's a good thing. Yeah. Anything that gets buzz is, is a good thing. So, okay, good. I'm glad because I... I've heard, um, you know, I'm glad you're self-published because you're in the same group that a lot of the people that are listening to our podcast are in um, because the route to traditional publishing and for your new series of books, this is actually a very accurate, um, you know, let's say you're going to do something for, like you said, for teachers, you can adapt your book and have an editor read it and get it published within a week or so. Where if you're going to go to a traditional publishing house to get it, first of all, it might be too short. They don't want it to be that short. And secondly, it's going to take a year to two years before it hits the market. See, well, there were so many reasons that went into my my husband writes thrillers Mm -hmm. and I write business books. And we've gone the traditional route, you know, with an agent. And just the whole process to me was so cumbersome and took so long and especially for me I write business books and business changes too fast exactly and you know so we just decided plus you know I I, I hate to have to admit it and I won't admit it where my family can hear me but (laughs) I am the world's worst control freak (laughs) I've just discovered I would rather do it myself I don't have to wait for approvals I don't have to wait for people I can just go, okay, there, give it away for, you know, this morning I built a press page for my book 
for you know a few press queries we were doing right and I just i just i taught myself a long time ago how to you know do these pages wordpress makes it a lot easier now yeah and i had a press page built within 15 minutes and then I could go off and do something else there. So when the press calls and says, well, we need a high res cover and we need a press yeah. release, I'm like, go to this page. It's all right there. Nice. You know, and it's really funny because I was just before the, someone that I was talking to right before your interview was, we are going to put together a package for, um, authors that don't have websites, um, because they're just pointing everybody to, for example, their Amazon author page and one of the things that um, I have a developer that's going to work on putting together a template for an author website, and it includes a media kit page because so many authors don't realize that they need that. You know, I mean, even if you're, you know, if you don't have an agent, you don't have a publicist, you don't know anything about PR, all you need is you need a page that you can send the press to that has that high-res cover, the high-res picture of you, your bio, your list of books, you know, what are the things that go into a media page and just make it real easy for them to get that out there because they don't know they need it. You know, it goes back to the beginning of the interview where you said that, um, you know, when you start the publishing process, you know you have a book and you know you want to get it to people to read it and you don't know that there's all these things that have to go on in between. And it is, it is. It's just, I, you know, just when I think I'm through for the day, I'm jotting down 15 more notes of things that I, I need to get to tomorrow. Um, so it is, and and there is no end. Uh, yeah. Let me just to to maybe somebody who's listening who says, well, I can't wait till this part's over. It's never over. Yep. And you know, then the next thing you know, you're writing the next book. And um, one of these days, I swear I'm going to retire, but. No, it you're not. Seem, it doesn't seem to be happening anymore. No, you're not. You're you're one of those people that will. I mean, and and here's the beauty of being an author: you can be an author when you want to be an author. That's what. See, that's what I like about it because you know I got up this morning and played golf for two hours. Not well, but I played golf. Yeah. And then I, you know, was able to say, okay, now it's time to go back to work. Yep. And you can schedule like if you need, you know, your your family wants to take a vacation. And, um, or like I did in June, I went on an unexpected road trip to help a friend move. And, uh, you know, I'm, I wasn't online during the day every day, but every night when we stopped, I had access to the internet. So none of my clients even knew I was away, you know, other than the fact that I highly publicized the road trip just for the fun of publicizing the road trip. Everything got done that had to get done. But it got done in the evening, um, you know, or late at night. And it wasn't, it didn't matter that for, you know, 12 hours a day I was on the road and I was out doing photography as part of the road trip. I'm a professional photographer. And, you know, I'm thinking along the way of this road trip that came up out of the blue, I have, you know, 235 gigs of brand new photos that I can use. So yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I hate to run out on you, but I'm going to have to run because I've got uh, I got to take off my author hat and put on my mommy hat. That is absolutely fine. Are you a work-at-home mom? I, I do. I work out of the house. And okay. I've got, uh, I've got, a 12, I've got three sons, 23, 16, and, and 12. The 23-year-old, of course, is gone and working, and the 16-year-old is has started a fabulous internship, so we're getting ready to homeschool him. That ought to be a new adventure. That's and, awesome. Um, and then a great 12-year-old is getting ready to be a teenager. Lord, help me. Okay. Um, well, why don't you tell the people where they can find you on the Internet? Give me your your main um, website and your Twitter, if you will. All right. The, the website is danasteel.com, and it's D A Y N A. S T E E L E. So Dana with a Y and three E's in steel, Dana steel.com. And I'm Dana steel on Twitter, Dana steel on Facebook, Dana steel on LinkedIn, Dana steel on Google plus. Okay. You gotta, you gotta stick with that branding. And the new book is 101 ways to rock your world. Everyday activities for success every day. All right, Dana. And I'm really glad that you took time out of your day to speak with us. 
And um, as always, folks, you can find those of you listening on iTunes that haven't been to our website yet, please go to bookgoodies.com and search for Dana Steele and you'll find the podcast where you can leave some notes and comments and you can also offer to be a guest or fill out a form to tell us about your book and we'll post that up on our website. We'd like to thank geekcast.fm for hosting all of our podcasts and you can find book goodies also on Twitter and Facebook just by slash book goodies and you can find me at debracardi.com or twitter.com slash loxley l-o-x-l-y thanks everybody for listening get writing and have a great day